it has been derived that we can um, uh, relate delta G naught with delta G. So we can calculate uh, free energy naught at, at equilibrium. Delta G naught is under standard state conditions, but uh, we want to be able to calculate our free energy at any conditions whatsoever. So uh, delta G equals delta G naught plus RT log of Q. Q is the reaction quotient. We're not going to focus on that on this um, video. We'll go on, focus on that on the next video. But uh, from this, we can get uh, another equation. So we know that at equilibrium, uh, delta G equals zero, and Q is equal to the equilibrium constant. So under those conditions of delta G equals zero and Q is K, we can solve this equation to get uh, delta G naught is, is minus RT log of K. And that R is the 8.3145 joules per mole Kelvin. So now we can relate our delta G naught to our equilibrium constant. So that is what delta G naught is showing us. It's not showing us spontaneity directly. It's showing us where our equilibrium constant lies. The inverse equation will be our equilibrium constant is E to the minus delta G naught over RT. So based on the properties of logs, if um, that k is 1, log of k is 0, so delta g naught will be 0. So delta g naught, whenever it's 0, that means our equilibrium constant is equal to 1. If we have a negative delta g naught, what it's going to end up doing will give us, giving us a positive uh, k, a large k, k is larger than 1. So negative 1 will have the negative cancel with this negative giving us a positive exponent, we're going to get a large K when delta G naught is 1. So um, when delta G is positive, this negative is not canceled off. We'll have a negative exponent here. We'll end up with a small K. So delta G naught is telling us where our equilibrium point lies in the reaction progress scheme of things. So delta G, this is a, a relative plot of free energy versus uh, reaction progress. We don't ever calculate free energy directly. We just do change of free energy, which is a slope on this. So we know that delta G is negative, the reaction goes forward. So it's sliding down the hill toward the equilibrium point. When it's positive, it's not spontaneous in the forward direction, it would be spontaneous in the reverse direction. So it would slide backwards down the hill toward the equilibrium position. So at equilibrium, our Q is equal to K. Before equilibrium, our Q is less than K. We want to it'll move forward to make the Q large enough until it equals K. If Q is larger than K, we'll pass equilibrium, and the reaction wants to go backwards to get down to K. So our delta G naught is telling us where this minimum point is, and the delta G is telling us what side of the equilibrium point we are on. So just a, a couple problems here to uh, work with this concept. So we have a uh, equilibrium constant for reaction, Ka for this uh, nitrous acid disassociation. We want to know what the uh, delta G naught is for that. Well, the equation is the minus RT log K. So we put in our values, we're gonna be using this 8.3145 joules per mole Kelvin for these calculations, because that'll give us units of energy that we want. Um, so we run this through our calculator, we end up with the 19,386 joules, 19.4, positive 19.4 kilojoules. So the positive is showing that uh, we have a small equilibrium constant. The reaction does not go far. Um, and of course, we already knew that we have a small equilibrium constant and the reaction will not go far. So another reaction, another problem, we're given a reaction, water, steam, vapor, um, combining with this uh, dichlorine oxide and make hypochlorous acid. We're given the 
pressures at equilibrium, and we're asking what our equilibrium, what our delta G naught is. So we're just a step back from this one. We have to calculate our equilibrium constant first, and then the, the delta G naught. So we write up our equilibrium expression is going to be the hypochlorous acid squared divided by the water vapor and the dichlorine oxide. We put in the equilibrium vapor pressures. Run through a calculator, we get an equilibrium constant of 0 0.0899. Now we go to the delta G naught equals minus RT log K. We put in our numbers, and we end up with a positive 5.97. So again, we have a uh, equilibrium constant that's less than one, and we have a positive delta G naught. And last one for this video, uh, we have the uh, born harbor process of reacting nitrogen with hydrogen make ammonia. And given that our uh, enthalpy reaction is minus 92 kilojoules, our entropy is minus 199 joules per Kelvin, I'm asking what our equilibrium constant is. So equilibrium constant we can get from our delta G, so we have to calculate our delta G from the delta S and delta H. So that's our first step here. We use um, delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. In this case, I turn the entropy into kilojoules. because so I know the answer wants to be in kilojoules anyway. So uh, we put in the values here, we end up with a negative 32.7. So a negative means that we have a large equilibrium constant. Now we go to the equation. Uh, equilibrium constant is E to the minus delta G over RT. Well, in this case, I'm moving there my Kilojoules back into joules, so it matches 8.3145 joules from mole count. Uh, the exponent comes out to be a positive 13.2, ran it through our calculator, and it comes out to be 5.39 times 10 to the fifth. So uh, negative delta G naught gives us a large equilibrium constant. And on the next video, we'll explore this equation of how we calculate our free energy at uh, different concentrations.